This video is brought to you by TrainSignal, your home for IT training products. The routers run at layer three of the OSI model, and their basic operation, well, it's to route. It's to route data packets and examine their own routing tables to see where to send the packet next. Now, again, routers are at layer three of the OSI model, and they can be configured with static routes, but again, if we can have things happen dynamically, we'd like them to happen dynamically. I'm not against the use of a static route once in a while, but usually you can get everything you need done in a dynamic fashion by using a routing protocol. And I put a couple on here for you. I doubt very seriously you even see these mentioned on Network Plus, and you'll definitely have plenty of time to learn about them in later studies, especially for the CCNA. But it's good stuff to know if you happen to have heard these terms around the server room. RIP is the Routing Information Protocol. OSPF is Open Shortest Path First, which is always a good idea. Uh, EIGRP is the Enhanced Interior Gateway Routing Protocol. BGP is Border Gateway Protocol. And again, you'll learn a lot more about these individual protocols and what they do uh, should you choose to pursue your CCNA. But these protocols are very different from each other, uh, believe me when I say that. The more you learn about them, the more you see how much how different they are. But the routing process itself always stays the same. And what we're going to do here is take a look at the routing process. You can see what's going on on a router by router basis. And let's start with this exhibit. In this diagram, there's a PC on the 10.000/8 network, another PC on another network 20.000/8, and you can see their individual IP addresses there next to the host devices and in this example that we're going to walk through the pc in this situation the top one wants to send data to 2112 but has no idea where that host is because it's not connected to the 2000 network so it can't know where it is the host itself is not going to be running a routing protocol so in this case the PC should be configured to use the router interface on its segment as its default gateway. And I'm going to give you several definitions for gateway here in a few moments because it's a, a widely used term and it can mean a lot of different things. But default gateway is basically there's where I'm going to send this data if I don't have any other idea where to send it. It's a gateway of last resort. It is the default gateway. You may have actually configured that on a PC, and also that's a piece of information that DHCP can assign to a workstation. In addition to the IP address and the mask and the location of the DNS servers, everything we talked about in the routing in the uh, network protocol section, then we can also tell the PC, here's your default gateway. So in this particular case, the PC would send the data to the router and just hope that the router knows how to get the data there to begin with. And if it does, which of course here it's connected to both segments, so it will, the PC at 10.1.1.2 will send the data to the router. The router will look at its routing table and see that it is connected to the network 20.0.0.0. So it says, okay, if I want to get it to that particular host, I need to send it out my interface that's on the 20.0.0.0 network. That is a directly connected network, and that's the only kind of network that the router does not have to learn about either statically or through a dynamic routing protocol. As soon as you open that interface up and give it an IP address, it sees, okay, I'm already directly connected to that. Again, routers do not depend on routing protocols to tell them about networks that are directly connected. And so this particular routing would not be a problem. As you can see here, I've illustrated a little further and taken the one PC out, but you can see the incoming packet coming into the router on Ethernet zero. And this particular router has two Ethernet ports, Ethernet 0 and Ethernet 1. And it sees the incoming packet IP destination is 2112-8. It's going to look at its routing table and say, okay, I'm connected to that network. So I know if I send it out E1, then it's going to get where it needs to go. Now, routing protocols become necessary, though, very quickly. Because if a router isn't directly connected to a network, We've got to tell the router somehow this is where to send data to get it to network X. And we can do that statically or dynamically. And again, you'll learn more about that later in your networking studies. 
But let's take a look at an example where a routing protocol or a static route would be necessary. I've taken the sending host out of the diagram here just to make it a little more clear. But in this scenario, the first router is directly connected to networks 10 and 20. And the, that particular router is receiving a packet destined for the host you see at the bottom, uh, 3112. Well, the router is going to look at its routing cable and see that it has nowhere to send that. It doesn't even know of the existence of that network, network 30. It doesn't have the faintest idea. So what it's going to do, unfortunately, is drop the packet because it has no idea what to do with it. Now, what we could do with that router is give it a static route and say, okay, if you send it to this other router that's on the other side of, the, of network 20, then that router could get it there because it's directly connected. We can also be running a dynamic routing protocol and that would allow the router, the, the top router, the one that's receiving the packet in the diagram, to say, okay, I know where network 30 is. If I send it out this interface, then it's going to get there. So that's how the routing packet delivery process works. As long as the networks in question are directly connected, there's no routing protocol needed. But as soon as they're not directly connected, and of course a router can only be directly connected to so many networks, then it's just going to drop the packet and we've either got to tell it statically how to get it there, or we've got to configure a routing protocol. This video is brought to you by TrainSignal, network admin's number one choice for professional IT training, where you'll find videos on Microsoft, Cisco, Linux, CompTIA, and more. Come visit us today at www.trainsignal.com.